Hey there, hi. This is Rob with Bentnail, and I performed the inspection on 1739 West Colchester Drive in Eagle. Uh, this is your video report. Uh, so this is just a courtesy to compliment the written report. I do always like to start my videos off with that and just encourage you to still read the written report. It's going to be other useful information we're not going to touch on here in this video. Then additionally, I find that it's just helpful to have things uh, written down in front of you alongside the photos with those explanations in the written report with this video to go ahead and complement that. So uh, now that we have that out of the way, uh, the way that this works is we're going to go through what are called summary items. Uh, specifically, we're going to go through summary one items. So that's uh, typically the, the bigger ticket items. Uh, so why do I document something summary one? Uh, typically because of the cost associated with the repair because it's a time sensitive issue as in I would recommend it be repaired, evaluated, replaced now without delay, uh, or it could be a safety related concern. Uh, so there are gonna be summary three. Those are the uh, smaller ticket items. Uh, we're gonna uh, cruise over those here in the video, um, but those will be waiting for you in the written report. And then additionally, there are summary two and summary four items. And that's what I refer to as other useful information. And that's gonna be things like, where's your main water shutoff valve? What size of the furnace filters? Where do you put the furnace filters? So good, useful information. Um, uh, but again, we're not going to touch on that here in this video. That will be waiting for you in the written report. So uh, now that we've kind of established some parameters, we'll just jump right in. And I'll try my best to, to get us through these in a timely manner. All right, starting out here, looking at the uh, exterior of the home, we have this pillar here on the front of the home. And it looks like it's beginning to lean here. So I'm not sure if that's due to settling or due to uh, inadequate support from the top. But either way, I would recommend for that to be evaluated uh, and, and any necessary repairs to be completed. Uh, continuing to look here on the outside of the home. So we have this, uh, this built-in planter box right here. Uh, and if you look here, we see some staining. And then if we get in closer... Again, you kind of follow my cursor. You can see like we have staining, like we've had moisture intrusion. And then it looks like we have what, what appears to be potential uh, microbial growth uh, in that area as well. Put my moisture meter there. And we're not getting any active moisture, uh, but there is the potential uh, that that's an ongoing issue that has not been resolved. And there's the uh, potential that we have damage from moisture intrusion uh, from this planter box in the interior of this wall. We did have a missing stone, uh, on the, just a one-off missing stone there. So I'd recommend for that to be replaced. Uh, taking a look here at the roof, uh, the drip edge flashing was loose in a couple areas, so I'll show you. We don't want to be able to move this like that. That should be nice and uh, secured uh, to the to the fascia board right there, or the, or the rake board. Uh, taking a look at the roof, this is a summary three item, but uh, the roof does appear to be original, so it is an older roof. Um, so 2006, that has us at 1417 years. Uh, this is what you would typically expect to get 20 to 25 years out of a roof um, of, of this uh, kind of shingle uh, roof covering material. Um, and I don't see any reason why we would not get uh, you know that, that 20 to 25 years, uh, but you could consider having a roof or come take a look at it. It does have you know, moderate granular loss. Uh, taking a look here at the attic, you can see here, uh, so this attic, uh, the whole support system in here is trusses, and trusses are not meant to be uh, structurally altered. So you can see here that this was cut, um, and so uh, I would recommend inquiring to see if this was uh, approved by a, an engineer, um, if we have documentation that during the construction of this home that this was approved. Otherwise, I would just recommend further evaluation from a qualified professional to uh, see what kind of ways we can what kind of avenues are available to correct this as again uh, trusses are, are engineered and meant to be installed as they uh, come complete and uh, not to be altered and cut uh, taking a look at the insulation we did have missing insulation in a few areas you can see here on this wall here's actually the inside uh, from the inside the home when i was uh, conducting thermal imaging uh, and then here's behind the bathtub there on that second level uh, and then here's that image as well uh, so we want to get that put in place and then the uh, access cover there on the second level as well as missing uh, insulation. Jumping into the crawl space, we did have mold uh, underneath. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the front of the home. Um, this area was covered in insulation. I did remove that insulation. Uh, and this area tends to, because we have the sill plate here and then we have this uh, OSB decking right here, it tends to trap moisture in those areas. Uh, but that being said, I did note that microbial above the sill plate, so I would recommend further evaluation and uh, cleanup or uh, remediation as needed. 
uh, any of these crawl space vents that are uh, at or below grade, I would recommend for them to uh, get crawl space vents uh, guards installed so that we prevent uh, moisture intrusion into the crawl space. Uh, we had a cut floor joist here underneath the furnace. So wherever a uh, floor joist is cut, uh, we need to see support directly underneath that cut. Uh, we did have another uh, notched floor joist here. Uh, this is underneath the master bathroom. And uh, so I'll kind of give you the, the short version. So this is an engineered eye joist. We have this solid run here. We have this solid run here on the bottom. And then we have this middle part that's called the webbing. You can only cut that middle webbing uh, for a third of that middle webbing. And it has to be a round cut. So if you touch the top uh, or the bottom solid runs or you do a square cut or a cut larger than uh, that, larger than a third of that webbing, uh, then we do, again, recommend that we get uh, proper support at those points uh, where the cuts are. Uh, on the joists. We did have missing insulation in a couple areas as well. We just want to make sure that any uh, areas that were missing insulation, that, it, that it's uh, put back into place and properly installed uh, in the crawl space, that is. Uh, we did have some mold here as well. This is just behind the second level bathroom, uh, behind the toilet, uh, likely just from water splashing out uh, periodically um, over you know, 17 years. There's plenty of opportunity for the water to just sit there. Uh, and cause that microbial growth. I would just recommend cleanup. Uh, looks like these exterior doors um, that the, <clears throat> pardon me, that the uh, seals have failed on them. So basically think like the seals uh, that you'd have on a window. Uh, it's the same idea. This is just a window inside this door, right? Uh, so over time, the sun beats down on them and uh, the, the seals fail. Uh, so it was this case on both of those exterior doors. And then on a couple of the uh, interior windows, so here we're on a second level. That's the smaller window in that room. Uh, here we are in the living room. That's that left side window uh, here in the master. Uh, and then here in that front bedroom as well. Uh, all of those windows do appear to have uh, failed seals. So we have evidence that we have condensation in between the panes. Uh, a couple of the windows have been replaced as well. So that may be something to uh, have your, your agent inquire on uh, the specifics um, but some of them were dated for uh, 2022. Uh, taking a look at the tile floors, you can see here that we have a crack here and then a crack here that was in the laundry room. And then just several areas, we just have these large just penetrations. It's, I'm not sure if the items were dropped, but they just have these damaged areas. Uh, so I would just recommend for uh, repairs or replacing uh, as needed. Uh, continuing, looking at the air conditioner, it is the original unit. Um, and so unfortunately the EPA has banned R22 refrigerant and so it's just very difficult to source. So that's something I wanted to make you aware of. Uh, so should you have to uh, service this unit again, it will be difficult if not impossible to source that uh, refrigerant. Um, looking at the furnace, you see here we have this corrosion and this staining uh, indicating that we've had uh, moisture intrusion through the flue. Uh, and then looking here, you can see that we have an uh, indication that we have a leak here uh, from the drain. Um, and then additionally, the unit was just short cycling, right? So that means when I turned it on, uh, when I ran the heat, it would just turn on and run for a couple minutes and then turn off and then run for a couple minutes and turn on and then turn off and turn on and then turn off. And so uh, it should not turn off until the home uh, reaches uh, whatever you set the thermostat to. Um, so all of those together are actually all of those separate, right? We want to have the unit serviced and then separate from that, uh, just due to the age of the unit, it, it is the original unit. So it's a 17 year old unit. There's no indication that it's been serviced. Um, so I would recommend that you have an HVAC professional, uh, just do a, a, an appropriate, um, just the seasonal, uh, tune up, um, and then any of these individual items, uh, repaired as needed. Uh, taking a look at the sub panel, um, on a, uh, um, anywhere that we have aluminum uh, lines like this, uh, these wires need to have uh, an antioxidant paste. Um, so I would recommend being that this is a, this is a Siemens um, panel. Uh, if it were a, a square D, that would not be required, but uh, that is the only one off. In any other application, we need to see some antioxidant paste here on these uh, aluminum lines. So I would recommend getting uh, those repairs completed from a qualified electrician. Uh, additionally, there's no carbon monoxide detectors in the in the home, so um, these hall units, the easiest approach would be to just replace those with uh, the, the uh, carbon monoxide uh, combination units. Um, we want to have those in between any sleeping spaces uh, and then any gas appliances. Uh, do make sure that the sprinklers are in good working order. Um, I did not go through the sprinklers, so we just want to make sure that there's no you know uh, busted sprinkler heads, spraying on your siding, ponding in the yard, things of that nature. 
Uh, take a look here at the expansion tank. This is a bolt-on accessory part uh, on the water heater. The water heater was original as well. Uh, and when I test this, I should only get air pressure, uh, and I'm not getting air pressure. I'm getting water running out of it, which means that that air bladder inside uh, has has failed, and uh, likely the the whole expansion tank needs to be replaced. Uh, Taking a look here in the master. Um, <laughs> pardon me. Excuse me. Uh, looking here at the master shower pan, you can see here. It looks like we have a crack. I don't know if it's been repaired. It was attempted to be repaired in the past. You look here. We kind of have missing grout, right? And again, just evidence of of some something has gone on here. So when I put my moisture meter here, we're getting uh, twenty one percent. That's not unusual. The closer we get to the actual pan itself, we're starting to peg out like we're having moisture intrusion into this ledge. Uh, as I uh, kind of documented this, and then. Just put that on pause. When I got underneath in the crawl space, you can see here that we do have uh, evidence that we're having moisture come from somewhere. So I don't know if we have a cracked pan or, or, or what's going on here, but I would recommend further evaluation from a, a qualified professional. Uh, looking here in the uh, that kind of hall slash guest bathroom uh, towards the front of the home. Uh, as I approached uh, the area, you can see here we just have kind of some staining here, like a potential past leak. And as I looked on the uh, P-trap here, again, we have evidence of a pass leak. And then when I look up actually at uh, the, the penetration there, you can see that we have staining a little bit of microbial indicating that it does appear that we have a past or a current leak there on that shower pan as well. So again, I would recommend further evaluation from a qualified professional uh, to see if that's an ongoing or a resolved issue. Uh, continuing, uh, then coming to a close here, uh, looking here, you can see that the uh, bottom panel here on the overhead door is damaged, so it's recommended repairs or replacing as needed. Then we have that ramp uh, that leads up to the uh, the entry from inside the garage to in the interior of the home. And this ledger right here, uh, this is going to be left in place. This does need to have uh, appropriate lag bolts to actually properly secure it. Uh, and that is it. That is uh, top to bottom for the uh, big ticket items. Um, I do hope that this video is helpful. Uh, I hope between this video and the written report uh, gives you a good understanding of my observations during the course of my inspection. But should this video not suffice and you have any additional questions, absolutely do feel free to reach out to the office and they'll put you in contact with me. Uh, but otherwise, again, my name is Rob. I would like to say thank you for choosing Pet Now and have a great rest of your day. Alrighty, bye.